making his way to the red corner. Would you please welcome from Cornwall in England, Mark the Pitbull Tucker. So Pierre, as Mark Tucker makes his way to the cage, this will be his first outing since a no contest with Sammy Barrett in 2009. Prior to that, he was three and one with his only loss to a man we know very well, Dean Bray. Two of his three wins are by KO, so it looked like he was building a good career. He had the no contest with Sammy Berwick and then drifted from the scene, but he's back now. Well, I tell you what, that's a period of about four years. You have to question yourself, is there going to be any ring rust tonight? Because I tell you what, he does have his work and a very, very tough opponent tonight. And for me as a manager or as a coach, maybe this is a fight that uh, should have come after a couple warm-up fights. But again, I don't know how much this guy has been training or what his mental attitude is, because some guys don't fight for a period of six months, come back, and it's like they never missed a step. Is he one of these guys? Who knows? I was thinking the same as yourself, that on this stage against the opponent that we'll mention afterwards, you should maybe have a couple of warm-ups, but there again, it's very hard when you've been out that time. What an opportunity to come back at Bama. So you've got to look at that as well, Pierre. There's lots of things you've got to factor in. Well, the good thing is looking at him right now, it looks like he actually wants to be in there. And now, ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the blue corner. And this evening, he fights in his home city of Birmingham, England. It's Tom One Bomb Breeze. Now, the reason I said that maybe Mark Tucker should have those warm ups is Bama is a really happy hunting ground for Breeze, for Tom Breeze, eight, seven, and four, his three victories, all by submissions. The last one at Kasim Shafiq, the man does not lose here. Talking to his coach, Mark Goddard, Mark Goddard said he puts him in every discipline and he's schooling guys that are at the top of their game in each individual discipline, as well as you mix it all together. And he's going to be one very hard customer here tonight. And I think the thing that when I'm talking to Mark Goddard that I really enjoyed talking to him is he said, I made sure that, you know, we did all the right things for him. He had a very long and extensive amateur career. So even though he's only had a couple fights on paper as a pro, he's had a multitude of fights to, you know, build that cage craft, to build, you know, take care of those nerves and just the little things, again, that make those big things happen. And we'll see if that ha happens here tonight. Well, we were here for Bamare, and immediately we said, what a fine physique this young man's got. What a, what a talent. And don't forget his victory over Kasim Shafiq was over a man that was also building a reputation. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. GoDaddy.com, in association with Lonsdale, present for your entertainment, Bama Nye. Featuring now a welterweight contest, three five-minute rounds of MMA action. Our referee in charge of the ring, Mark Woodard. Ladies and gentlemen, firstly introducing on my left, this evening, fighting out of the red corner, his official weight for this contest, 170 pounds. He brings to the ring a fight record consisting of seven victories with three defeats. Ladies and gentlemen from Cornwall, England, would you please welcome Mark the Pitbull Tucker. 
And across the ring stands his opponents this evening, fighting in his home city of Birmingham, England. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he brings to the ring a perfect fight record. Three visits to the cage with three victories. His official weight for this contest, 171 pounds. Would you please welcome Tom Wonderbomb Breeze. This is a welterweight contest, three five minute rounds of MMA action. So what an intriguing contest, Pierre. And again, when we look at it, Mark Tucker, 41 years of age, Tom Breeze, just 19. Huge difference, but the other thing I want to say is, 2009-2012, the way MMA evolves, four years is a long, long time in this game. A very long time. But again, let's make the point that you made earlier. When Bama comes knocking, you answer the door. And I think it was just too much for him to pass up, and that's why he took this fight. And there's also different types of 19-year-olds. You think, well, this 19-year-old is a boy. It's certainly not the case with Tom Breeze. Definitely not. His nickname should be Manchild. <laughs> Huge height advantage as well. And at this time, from that southpaw stance, it's all sorts of problems for the returning Mark Tucker. Now, when you're in against a southpaw, you want to keep your lead leg to the outside of their lead leg, because if not, then you're opening it up for them to throw that straight left and down the pipe. And you must remember to circle in the opposite direction. You get in the habit of circling outside the left hand. You've got to circle the opposite way now, or you'll be walking into the heavy hand. And, and it's a hard thing for people to change, Pierre. It is, because, you know, repetition. You know, you've repetitively done it the same way. Um, and then, you know, you're asked to change it one night for three, five minute rounds. Sometimes it doesn't always work out. We train our boys to slip outside that right and throw your own right. A little bit of a looping hook there from Breeze. Now, from this position and that height, for me, Breeze, I would be throwing that rear left leg. Bring it around after the jab. And I think that's a perfect point that you made. Good left straight down the pipe, overhand there, misses. Um, when you throw that down, big knee straight into the stomach. And I, one word for that is ouch. But when you spoke about throw the uh, jab and opposite leg, it's just body mechanics. It complements it, it loads it, you could throw it. Especially with, with the height difference here, there's not much effort to bring it up to a, a, a really crippling head height. Now the problem for Mark Tucker as he gets the, the rust out of him is he's standing perfectly at Tom Breeze's range. Mm. Straight left to just make it inside the guard. He needs to be far closer so those long arms can't fully extend so that he can't really get his punches off. Now the problem that that poses is if he slips in using a Mike Tyson-esque type head bob to the outside gets in, then Breeze gets the clinch, then you go down to the ground and we've seen his submissions before. He's a guy, a, oh! Blistering. That, that knee to the midsection also really shook his man up. Now, did you see the wizard? He just wizarded his man, uh, and that was technique accompanied by strength to get his man Tucker onto the ground. He's going to push through the half here. I think this should be the beginning of the end now, Pierre, for Mark Tucker. That was a huge knee he took on the way in there after a very solid short right hand. Now there's some blood uh, on the eye, I believe it's the left eye of Tucker, so you, you know he's showing a little bit of wear and tear, so that breeze punch did make a connection. There was that short right hand and then the blistering knee. All, all credit to Tucker for taking that already. And he's showing shapes that he deserves to be in there, that he knows what's going on. Now he's going to have to make distance, he's going to have to get that knee shield in a little bit deeper, create some distance, but saying that Breeze is the longer limb fighter and That's still may be able to hit him. him. And this is the problem because he doesn't want to eat many more of those downward elbows. Now he's doing a wizard of his own back to his feet. Or attempting to get back to his feet is one Tucker. However, Breeze hand control. Now this may be this is going to be a very bad position. He's got one hand trapped underneath Tucker, and he's just throwing the shots underneath the arm. And over the top. He might not need the submission here. This might be enough. The intelligent defense might not be what Mark Woodard is seeing. 
and with still one minute left in this round there's time here for a stoppage but all credit to Tucker for taking that and he's going to have to watch that knee he's going to have to watch that knee hand control there from Tucker possible fireman's carry but he's in a dangerous position doing that as you said from the longer limb man oh big knee again left knee to the head this time that's three knees consecutively that has landed for Breeze make that four Tucker is game but there's not much else you can say in this comeback because he's against a young man making his way in modern MMA now after four years out and I think it's, it's a hard lesson in how the game has evolved but my hat's off to Tucker he is one tough customer and you know what many other guys may have just let the submission slap on oh, or he, he had out. the excuses to, to be finished there he, he had every excuse to come out of that fight and he's still there so full credit to him those knees alone especially the big one to the midsection but the fact that he's still here is credit to him I tell you what, I had to take a look around for a second there. I thought it was in Lumpini. I mean, those knees were coming up quick, fast, and in a hurry, and with mean intentions. Now, Malcolm, for me, Tucker is going to have to start slipping the shots. He's going to have to work his way to the inside, but not standing straight in front, because then you have those knees and the clinch. You have to disengage, throw in the shots, disengage, and slip and come in the back end. Well, the biggest problem you see for him, Pierre, is with the tools of the trade this young man's got, the natural ability he's got, the, the strength and the age factors, where can you see him mounting an offense from? It, to me, this is survival for Tucker, and it's going to be a hard way to go through three rounds, because you cannot see a, a successful offensive when you look at everything in this equation. Yes, I agree with that, but he still has a shot at racking up points. This fight's smart. If you know that he's gonna, uh, that Breeze is gonna be able to take the advantage on all different levels, you have to get those points scoring when and where you can. it's the right thing to do to close the distance with the striker but then you have the knees to deal with because he's, he's excellent in the clinch as well now breeze was varying up the knees he wasn't throwing the straight knees straight to the stomach he was bringing those across little round circular motions as he brings that knee across um, i've seen some guys get knocked out from body shots with those type of knees But he's like a little terrier tucker is he doesn't stop he's still there trying to get in your face trying to throw shots of his own i mean any sort of ring rust aside you can see the man's got a natural toughness about him but you just can't see at the moment here where a victory could come from at the moment it really is about how much you can take and that was it, it that was the tap from the knee now that was a beautiful setup by Breeze. He took the outside leg, kneed, affecting the base of Tucker. Tucker swiveled, and at that exact moment, that's when he threw the opposite knee straight into the, the stomach, and down Tucker went, tapping out. And I tell you what, that's that swing knee that we talked about earlier, and that's a perfectly executed one there by Tom Breeze. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Our referee, Mark Woodard, has stopped the contest. After one minute, 30 seconds of round number two, the decision, it's tapped out due to strikes. Therefore, our winner from Birmingham, England, Tom, one bomb, Brees.